I'm working at TSN and the Toronto Star simultaneously. It's the uh, 93 Stanley Cup playoffs. And part of my deal, and the Star didn't love it, but it was part of my deal was, listen, in, 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 um, in May, I've got to go cover the Memorial Cup for TSN. We had the rights to the Memorial Cup. So I, I was off doing the Memorial Cup and the Leaf series with the Kings started. And um, I was picking it up in, uh, I want to say, picking it up in game five at Maple Leaf Gardens. So I, I'm just parachuted in, but you know, I'm a pro. So I'm, I make sure I do my homework. I called, I called, you know, I think I probably talked to Barry Melrose and talked to whoever was the GM of the Kings at the time. I forget now. And, and uh, you know, Cliff Fletcher and, and, and Pat Burns and, and, and media people. And so I had a really good feel for what happened in the first four games. So I didn't feel like I was going in too cold. So it's game five and it, it looks like it's going to overtime now. So I, I kind of decided before the night started, I, I, I'm a columnist. I got to have some ideas before the night started. The two themes for me were, were as follows on the King side, Gretzky was playing okay, but not like Gretzky. And Dave Andrichuk wasn't really doing a lot for, hadn't done a lot for the Leafs, and he was their 50-goal guy and whatever. So I had it in my mind that if either one of these guys didn't have a good game, that might be a really good column to do. So as the game wore on, I didn't think Gretzky was playing particularly well, and I didn't think Andrew Chuck was playing very well. So the game's going to overtime, but I'm on deadline. And so the deal is, like, you don't have a lot of time to do a column. So in the intermission between the end of regulation and the start of overtime, I basically had to write two columns. One if they, one if the Kings win, and one if Andrew, Ch uh, sorry, if the Leafs win. And so, so I started writing, and I wrote a, a, a column about Gret, the, the framework of a column about Gretzky, and I wrote a framework of a column about Andrew Chuck. And both of them, I wouldn't say they were rip jobs, but because I'm, I'm, I'm usually not a guy that rips people crazily, but you know, they were critical pieces. That if the Leafs lose, then Andrew Chuck needed to do more and needs to do more, or they're going to lose this series. And if the Kings lose, Gretzky needs to do more, and and on. So, I as I said, I felt pretty good about both columns, but it's hard to write a column that fast. Anyways, as fate would have it, um, the Leafs score in overtime, and so it's the Gretzky piece that. Uh, that goes. So now the first edition of it, I just send it without any quotes. And, and I thought I was being like really respectful because it, it's, it's goddamn Wayne Gretzky. You better be respectful. Um, and, and so I basically said, listen, I'm not saying Gretzky's washed up. I'm not saying that he stinks. I'm not saying any of these things, but I'm just telling you, he you know looks to me like there's something wrong with him. But if there's not, you know, whatever. And I, and I did a critical analysis of some shift by shift stuff. And I said, the, the line that was in there that really ended up becoming the, the touchstone was he's skating around like he's got a piano on his back. Mm. So, so the piece runs, I go down to the room and I thought I better go talk to Gretz and, and find out if there's something wrong with him or whatever. So I go to the King's room in Maple Leaf Gardens and I, I'm asking him and I could tell as soon as I asked him, he looked the, he, he gave me the little, you know, hairy eyeball look and as if to say, like, why are you asking that? He goes, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Everything's good. And I'm like, oh, OK. And so I go up and I put his quotes in or whatever and, and send it off. So so the story goes and now we're flying the next day to L.A. and, and we're going for game six. And I hear through the grapevine that Wayne's not too happy. And Mike Barnett's not too happy as agent. The, the piano on the back line didn't go over very well. <laughs> um, and 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 Wayne is Wayne always knew knew everything that was said about him. And and I used to joke that you know Wayne had rabbit ears and thin skin. Um, in addition to being like the greatest player that ever played the game. So, anyways, the story goes. Now it's game six, and of course that's the famous game where Kerry Fraser would tell you about the rest of it, you know, over time, the high stick on Gilmore doesn't get called. And we're going back for game seven to Maple Leaf Gardens. So I can remember it's Saturday morning 
And by now I've heard very strongly that Team Gretzky is livid, like livid. <laughs> And I'm like, oh boy, guy you go. really want to piss I, off. Yeah, too. I, okay, All right, I, we're moving. I, we're moving out of Canada now. Yeah. So, anyways, I'm like, I'm like, okay. So I remember I, it was Saturday morning, and I can remember very clearly. I was going to get my hair cut, and the guy was cutting my hair. He says, "Oh, big game tonight, Game Seven, Leafs Kings." And and keep in mind, if the Leafs win this, they're going to the Stanley Cup Final against the Montreal Canadiens. It's going to be a Toronto Montreal Stanley Cup Final. And so I'm getting my hair cut and the guy's going, oh man, it's going to be so awesome. I think the Leafs are going to win tonight. And I said, nope. And he goes, what do you mean? I go, no, they're not going to win. And, I, and he goes, yeah, I, I think they're good. I go, not a fucking chance. And he goes, why? <laughs> and I go, because Gretzky's really, really, really pissed off. And when Gretzky gets pissed off, oh, it's going to be yeah, all fucking, over. Fucking I Patrick. said, it's going to be so bad for the Leafs tonight. Yeah. And, and of course, what happened? Wayne Gretzky, I forget the goals and points. You guys can look it up. But I know he had three goals. Um, yeah, and the, I know and he the had last three one, goals. And the last one, he came around from behind the net and he, he banked it off Dave Ellett's the back of his leg intentionally and into the net. And I still am not sure, but I have a funny feeling that he looked up at the press box briefly after he did that. <laughs> um, but but the, 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 the gist of the story is that he played what he t- will tell you was the greatest game of hockey he's ever played in the National Hockey League, Game Seven against the Toronto Maple Leafs. <laughs> that's a and that's a great story that you're behind so, part so, of that. So now, so now I go I go down to the now I I should have gone to I should have gone to the King's room to let him say or do whatever he was going to do. But I'm working the for the face. Toronto Star, and the and the story as much as it was Gretzky you know, torpedoing the Leafs. I had to go to the Leaf room and talk to Wendell Clark and Doug Gilmore and Pat Burns and whatever. I didn't have a lot of time. So I went down and I did that. And um, I went into the room and I I want to say it was Mark Osborne who was playing for the Leafs at the time. And he looked at me and he goes, this is all your fault. And he wasn't, he was not kidding. You pissed him off. And, and this is what, this is what became of it. So uh, I'm like, okay, back up to the thing. And then I, I finished, put the quotes in, call it a night, whatever. So now I'm going to cover this. I'm going, and, and Gretzky afterwards was quoted as saying, you know, oh, the piano man had one more two. I don't know if it was Gretzky. Mike Barnett, I think, was quoted as saying to somebody, the piano man had one more tune in him or something. And, and whatever. I think, I think and, Gretzky might have said in a post game interview, like, nice that I got the, I got the piano off he my got back. The nice, yeah, he got the piano off his back. 